So this is my story. I didn't grow up Christian. I kind of grew up knowing about God, but never actually knowing Him. I kind of grew up knowing, okay, if I do bad things, God's mad at me. If I do good things, He's not mad. So just keep Him happy. Don't do bad things and you'll be fine. And also I feel like a lot of the circumstances in my life made me believe that I wasn't good enough or that I needed to be something else or live up to something in order to be received and loved. I didn't really just feel like I could be myself. I didn't really feel like I was good enough or any of that. And so my entire childhood, I was trying to be somebody else. I was trying to be the 4.0 student. I was trying to be good at all the school activities and the sports and try to be all these things to be loved and I just never found it. I just never found that longing in my heart to be loved, to be accepted just as I was. I remember in high school, I ended up falling in love with this guy because he gave me that love that I had been longing for my entire life. And so when I finally received that love, it was like I gave my whole heart and everything to this man. <laughs> and he wasn't even a good guy. Like he, he was not a good guy, but he just gave me that love that I'd been longing for. And so I ended up moving to California. He ended up being really abusive. So being abused in every way for you know, years. And every time, it kind of just reaffirmed that lie that I'd been living under my whole life, that you're just not good enough. It's your fault you need to be something different. And then I also found out that he had been cheating on me and I was devastated. I basically vowed that I'm never gonna love again because I was so heartbroken. And instead, I'm gonna become the most beautiful, the most famous woman ever so that nobody could ever hurt me again. So that became my drug and I ran after it wholeheartedly. I developed a very intense eating disorder. I was bulimic. I was throwing up about 20 times a day. I was alcoholic. I was drinking myself to sleep every single night. I had self-hatred. I had depression. I hated my life. But as long as I was beautiful, and as long as I was successful, that to me was all that mattered. So I tried to get into the modeling industry, and there was like instant success. In a moment, it felt like I was on magazine covers and posters, working at all these amazing events. I was dating famous athletes. It looked like the life of glitz and glam that everyone wanted. And it might look good on the outside, but you have no idea the prison that I am in every day. I remember there was a moment in my modeling career where you know, it was still really taking off and I actually got approached by Playboy magazine. It was when they were really big, they had their own TV show at the time, it was really popular. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of exposure, it's like instant fame. I remember just kind of thinking about it that night and I was like, wow, like what if someday I get married? What if my husband doesn't like that I've done this? wow, this is real life. Like my decisions today actually could affect my tomorrow. Like how did I even get here? I was this 4.0 student and now here I am about to sign up for Playboy. Like how did I get here? And so in the wrestling, I tried to remember when was the last time I was happy? And I actually remember that it was when I was a kid and I went to church and when I thought God still loved me. And at this point I had sinned so much. Like I was just in a life of sin. And so I thought, surely God is done with me. But something within me was saying, that was the last time I was happy. So I show up at this church and just so happened they were having a young adult retreat that weekend. And I just felt like I was supposed to go. So I went and on the second day of the retreat, they were having this thing called God time where you'd get out a journal and you'd get out a Bible and you would talk to God and then you'd hear what he had to say. The thing that really struck me was I open up my Bible 
and I ended up turning to this book called Hosea. And so Hosea, he's a prophet, and God tells him to go and marry this prostitute. So he marries this prostitute and he loves her, but she keeps cheating on him like over and over again. And Hosea goes back to God and he's like, God, my heart is breaking. My wife is cheating on me. And the Lord says, Hosea, I want you to go and keep loving your wife because that's how I love my people who keep running away from me. Though they don't love me back in this moment, I keep loving them. And I remember it just struck me. Lord, I am that prostitute. I've turned my back on you and I've just gone after every other lover, everything to bring me comfort, bring me satisfaction, bring me happiness. I'm looking in all these other things and I've forgotten you, God. And so I asked the Lord in that moment, like, Lord, after all I've done, like you could still love me? He's like, yes, I'm still running after you after all that you've done. And then later that night, they actually asked people to come up to the front if they wanted prayer. Again, something within me told me to go up there. I go up there to get prayer and this lady starts praying for me and she says, Melissa, everything you've ever been told in your life is a lie. You are beautiful. You are wanted. You are precious to the Lord just the way that you are. You don't need to change for anybody. And that, that was the lie I had lived under my entire life was you're not good enough. And when she said those words, it was just like an arrow that pierced my heart. It was like the Lord just saying, all those times where you never felt good enough, I always said that you were good enough. I loved you just the way you are. You never needed to change. You never needed to seek love from all those other people. I loved you just the way that you were. I created you that way and I love you. And I remember when she said those words, I just started sobbing. It was as if years of pain was just getting broken off of me and I just wept. Literally in a moment I could feel my eating disorder getting broken off of me. Self-hatred, depression, alcoholism. In a moment I got delivered of all of those things and I remember the next morning I woke up and I truly was a new person. I was not the same. I woke up and for the first time in my life I felt joy. I felt freedom. I felt as if finally I had found me and I'd found my purpose and my purpose was just being his and knowing who I was in him. And I just decided that day, I'm just gonna leave everything. I left the modeling industry. I left social media. I didn't look at magazines. I wanted to throw all that life away so that I could find my entire identity in him. God, who do you say I am? I joined this internship where they prayed and they did community for the first like year though. He just had to strip me of everything that I held on to and it was like every step of the way the Lord was like, Melissa, just keep trusting me and finding your identity in me. And so I just would cry, but I would just give it to him and trust him. And over time, I just realized, Lord, you're better. You are better than all those other things. You're better than what the world offers. You're better than being the most beautiful, most successful person in the world. You're better. And when I give those things up, I can experience you. And it's just so much greater. And I ended up moving to Kansas City where I became a missionary. That's my story. I went from model to missionary, all because of the grace of God. And I know who I am now. And, and some of you out there, you don't know who you are yet. The world's been trying to tell you who you are. They've been lying to you and saying, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You have to be this, you have to be that in order to be loved. And it's a lie. So for some of you, my story is your story, and the Lord has a different ending for you. The Lord can write a beautiful story with your life, but all you have to do is give Him a pen.